Hello and welcome to another edition of Eyewitness Report on Channels Television. I am Jomi Otaibi. Following recent pictures and videos from our eyewitness reporters, this episode of the program will examine the efforts by the River State Government and the Nigerian Navy in fighting crude oil theft and illegal refineries in River State. In Anambra, a joint security operation leads to the demolition of Kidnappers' Den in Oba, a Demoli South local government area of the state. We also bring you an update on the petrol tanker fire in Jos, the Plateau State capital. These and more shortly. We begin from River State. The military appears to be making progress in the onslaught against economic saboteurs with the discovery of Obumakiri and Tangbolo Suji communities in the Gema local government area of the state where illegal oil bunkering and crude oil theft are taking place. Like the usual surveillance, officers of Nigerian Navy ship NNSS Pathfinder and Port Harcourt leads journalists on a visit to a seaside market at Castorn Channel near Obumakiri community in Degema local government area of River State. The team is led by commander of NNS Pathfinder, Commodore Suleiman Ibrahim. The tour is to enable journalists witness the effort of the Navy in curbing crude oil theft in the area. The naval crack team had uncovered an illegal crude oil market in the area where oil thieves trade adulterated petroleum products. Um, if you would recall, on the 1st of April, the Nigerian Navy launched Operation Dakota de Parau, which um, literally means halting the thief. Because um, we all know that um, in the last uh, couple of months, Nigeria had been unable to meet up her quota of um, crude oil production. And this was as a result of um, the activities of illegal crude oil thieves. And um, just behind you, there is um, where we refer to as a market square. That is um, over 50 square kilometers where stolen crude is illegally cooked. Our tactical riverine squadron was able to identify the source of the crude oil theft. And then um, with the aid of the helicopter, so we um, were able to deploy. And then when we got here, we discovered four boats, but one has sunk already. So um, three of them are still floating, and we've equally discovered the manifold where this uh, product is being um, stolen from. The discovery was made following the deployment of troops and military assets as part of a special operation launched earlier in the year. Aerial surveillance, and this um, is made possible by the support of the chief of the naval staff, was deployed resources and platforms to make sure that this illegal activity is put to a stop. And additionally, we've equally gotten support from um, the Joint Tax Force, Delta Safe, and um, South South. They had equally launched um, Operation Octopus Grip. So as it stands, there are two ongoing operations, all aimed at boosting crude oil production for Nigeria, and at the same time, stopping all of those people that have made it a part of their lives to steal and deny the nation its legitimate earning. Eminent, distinguished, invited guests, ladies and gentlemen. This comes days after the Nigerian Navy hosted a maritime conference in honor River State to conclude the 66th anniversary. The conference enables participants from the Nigerian Navy and their counterparts from other countries to discuss new ways of tackling maritime crimes in Africa. Throughout history, nations that have developed have leveraged on the advantages offered by the sea to drive their trade 
and enhance their prosperity. The African continent, cognizant of this, has hinged Africa's growth potentials and wealth creation on the development of its blue economy as encapsulated in the Africa Integrated Maritime Strategy 2050. It is in this line that the theme for the International Maritime Conference 2022 was carefully articulated as, I quote, optimizing international collaboration for maritime security and sustainable socio-economic development in Africa, unquote. This conference therefore draws strength from our allied navies, as well as seeks to provide African navies the opportunity to deliberate on topical issues with a view to developing strategies that will enhance our collective preparedness towards meeting present, emerging, and future maritime challenges within the Gulf of Guinea and Africa. To mark the 66th anniversary, a special military operation, codenamed Eddie Diana, is launched to enhance maritime security on the Gulf of Guinea. The crew, comprising local and foreign naval personnel, patrol the high sea for days to demonstrate a collaborative force. The chief of defense is upbeat about the advantages of collaboration to Nigeria. Of course, a better um, maritime environment, a more secure maritime environment, such that um, our maritime assets will be able to exploit them to the advantage of the Nigerian state and of course for the um, other you know, users of our command uh, for them to be able to build their capacities in that regard too. So this is. Um, such a huge, you know, asset or benefit lies ahead of us. We'll be able to exploit, you know, the uh, the blue economy as it were, which will, you know, aggregate to um, Nigeria's uh, GDP. Recently, the NNS Pathfinder discovered a settlement, Tambolo Sunji in Degema, where illegal oil bunkering and artisanal refining take place. At least 13 male suspects in connection to the crime were arrested. Also recovered from the suspects are tools used for fabrication and storage vessels. However, on getting here, the people that are engaged in this act of illegally cooking crude oil have set the place ablaze to actually prevent us from uh, gaining access. Equally want you to see that while we do these operations, that we are putting our lives equally at risk. And I mean, while um, that operation was going on, we equally had um, an incident and we have some of our personnel, our colleagues, who are currently at the hospital receiving um, treatment from bond. <laughs> Tangbolo Sunji is known to be a major hub for crude oil theft and illegal refining of petroleum products. To support the war against illegal crude oil refining activities, Governor Yesen Wike earlier in the year gave a marching order to the military to double its effort in apprehending those engaged in illegal oil theft and bunkering. Governor Wike noted that illegal crude oil refinery operators are causing great health hazards to residents of the state and destroying the national economy. He also offered 460 million naira to the 23 local government areas to fight oil bunkering in their domains. The renewed call by the state government has resulted to more discoveries of illegal refineries across the state. Security operatives in Anambra State have smashed a criminal hideout in the latest operation against kidnappers in the state. The raid led to the demolition of a bungalow which served as kidnappers' den in Oba, a demolly south local government area of the state. Anambra State has had troubling times with crimes 
as kidnapping, killing, and armed robbery has become daily occurrences. The state government's resolve to deal with criminal elements appears to be yielding results as hideouts are being raided by security operatives every other day. The latest is the house in Oba, Idemili South local government area. And where they keep their victims. Uh, if you are in such a situation, I'm sorry for your building. The small, old-looking bungalow is allegedly a den for hiding kidnapped victims. The joint security team had earlier stormed the den and rescued three victims, including a reverend father. After hours of searching through the bushes, two kidnapped suspects are arrested with locally made pistol, charms, hard drugs, among other items in their possession. <laughs> Not long, a bulldozer is deployed to demolish the building. Reacting to the developments, Governor Chukuma Saludo restates his commitment to tackle faceless criminals in the state headlong. Anyone, no house, no bush, no location in Anambra will be safe to kidnappers and these criminals that are unleashing by heaven on our land. And consequently, any bush, any land, any house where anyone is caught, these criminals are caught, we will bulldoze that. And so, pursuant to the law, uh, anti-kidnapping law in Anambra State, the house that was used as a den for these kidnappers, and where they kept their victims and so on, um, immediately that was discovered, that house by law was confiscated by government. It became now the property of Anambra State government and the government is at liberty to do whatever they wish it with it. And today we took a decision that that house will no longer house kidnappers anymore. We we'll raise it to the ground and clear that compound. We understand this complicity of silence on the part of people around. But we've said, if you see something, say something. We've given out the numbers, give us information. Tell us if you have anything suspicious. Any place that you see something suspicious happening that you suspect might be criminals, tell us. We will go there and take them out. And for the neighbors of that neighborhood, I mean, uh, the particular house, must have been seeing something. The complicity of silence must be condemned. We'll keep a zoom on that neighborhood and on the people who are living there. Because there must be something going on around that neighborhood. And let me use this opportunity to thank the joint forces of our security men and women, whether it's a vigilante or the army, the police, the navy, the uh, civil defense, and the uh, DSS, and, and so on, for their gallantry, their bravery, and the determination of all of us in their number to keep our number safe of criminals. Anambra must become a livable and prosperous homeland, and we must get rid of all the criminals on our land. It will not be safe for anybody else. Governor Saludo also appeals to the people of Anambra State to be security conscious at all times and report to relevant authorities any suspicious movement 
or strange people in their communities. Welcome back. No fewer than nine persons were killed following a communal clash between two border communities of Lugunda and Waja in Adamawa State. We would like to warn that some of the images in the next report may be disturbing. Viewers' discretion is advised. After cutting short his official trip to Abuja, Governor Umaru Fintiris visits the two warring communities of Luguda in Guyuk local government and Waja in Lamode local government area to assess the damage occasioned by communal clash. Governor Fintiri is accompanied by the deputy governor, security chiefs and some top government officials. Houses set ablaze, farm produce destroyed, and many rendered homeless as residents move their belongings to safer places. <laughs> some of the displaced persons are now housed in a school under the watch of police and the military personnel. A leader in Waja community gives figures on the casualties from communal clash. The chairman of the affected local government councils speak on the crisis. It's a communal crisis. Uh, that happens, they started on Monday uh, between farmers that are claiming the same land. Somebody went to the farm to plant, and someone went there and claimed the land is his own. So while they were trying to sort out themselves, uh, it went into a commotion. Uh, we tried to subside it on Monday, uh, it was really subsided. On Tuesday, we were here. It was okay until yesterday evening around 6 uh, when we had report that houses have been burned. So actually the situation is very unfortunate. At the moment, they need medical, they need food, they need shelter. No matter how the place will be, because they need a place to call a home. As you can see, their houses were burned down. It is truly a pathetic uh, situation. Some of them were living with their relatives. Commiserating with members of both communities, Governor Omaru Fintiri attributes the conflict to disagreement over land ownership. It is our responsibility to ensure that this area and community is well protected. Uh, uh, we are going to have our security meeting here right in this community today uh, with all the service commanders and and, and, the, and the chairman of the two local government, and to ensure that uh, whatever necessary uh, security measures and actions that are needed to, to, to secure them are put in place right now and today. The government agencies are responsible for uh, taking care of displaced uh, IDPs are on their way. Uh, the Minister of Health are also on their way to come and take care of the, the sick ones and also the, the children that we have all seen there. Uh, so pathetic, uh, but already I've put all the necessary measures uh, to ensure that we bring some succor uh, to the people of this community. The Commission of Police in Adamawa State also lends his voice by appealing to those behind the crisis to embrace peace. Let me plead to those who want to foment trouble or who are fomenting the trouble. Peace brings development. Development brings goodness to the people. Goodness to the people brings product, high productivity and progress. So we plead it. Those who want to, whose stock in trade is to foment trouble, they should please spare us and stay in other places. But Adamawa State, anybody who brings trouble here, we we'll use his head to carry the trouble because we are going to give it back to them. In response to approaching farming season, the command has proactively created a team of 40 policemen led by a superintendent of police. This team is a response team to any communal crash that Ria is had in Adamawa State. So but any, any, any stress, any, anything at all, any crisis at all that happens, the rest are short, 30 minutes maximum will be at that spot to nip it in the bud. 
Besides the destruction of properties, nine deaths were recorded in the communal violence. The state government had earlier imposed curfew on Lafia, Bushikiri, and other surrounding communities. A fire from a fuel laden tanker that exploded in just north local government area of Plateau State left one dead and several properties destroyed. The fire occurred in the early hours of Thursday, June 9, when a truck loaded with premium motor spirit lost control and ran into the barricade of the University of Joss Veterinary Teaching Hospital. An eyewitness video captures a scene of commotion as fire from a fallen 33,000 litre petroleum laden tanker rages through shops and other property around Polo Roundabout. The extent of damage becomes glaring by daybreak. <laughs> Emergency responders and security operatives arrived to meet the wreckage of the ill-fated fuel tanker and damages resulting from the fire. The tanker is said to have taken off from Agbara in Ogu State, heading to Gombe State en route Joss, where it fell and spilled its content. A fire outbreak ensues, destroying nearly everything in its path, including the veterinary teaching hospital, parts of a filling station, and shops. <laughs> A dealer of spare parts of generating sets and industrial equipment maintenance is affected. Around uh, uh, 1 a.m., 12 to 1 a.m., so I received a call from some of the people that were around that I should come down that my equipment at uh, Gadaju, uh, just no lo local government shopping plaza, was on fire. So I have to call my wife and two of us, we enter my vehicle and we came down. When we come down here, everywhere was on fire. So when it fell, the, 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 the fuel that they carried had to enter the gutter that linked down to my shop, close to Gadabu Bridge. And uh, through that fuel, the fire followed the fuel and uh, consumed all the engines that are kept outside. So there's nothing that we're able to rescue all the machineries, compressors that I have outside, about 14 or 15 of them got burnt beyond repair. The fire destroyed all documents and records in the veterinary teaching hospital, which also serves as a referral center and research institute for the North Central region. Well, it has destroyed everything that we have. All our labs are down all our equipment and facilities for teaching and research and also for attending to uh, veterinary care on the state are all kind of gone because the state relies on us to provide the secondary health care here because the state currently is understaffed and has no other facility. So we were doing both secondary and tertiary health, animal health care here. So this has actually adversely affected us, and not just us, but the state and the surrounding states. Because right from Saminakar to part of Bauchi, they actually depend on us here for animal care and animal tr treatment. Of, so it has affected us. The reports received on the circumstances surrounding the accident and its impact are explained by the regional head of the National Emergency Management Agency, Nema. What happened actually was uh, a tank, a tanker driver that uh, came in and ran into the uh, vicinity of the university veterinary uh, um, area. Now from our assessment and when we came in, the DPO of Laranto was able to brief us on the situation. 
we lost one life, which we came in in a coordinated body. Now we're able to now uh, take up the dead corps and uh, hand it over to the Nigerian police for further burial rights. A lot of uh, impact in terms of loss of uh, buildings, equipment for, uh, from the university is being recorded. Uh, other business uh, areas uh, too, we learned that is, uh, is, uh, we have lost a lot of great deals of uh, properties. Where the assessment is ongoing. Accidents involving heavy duty and articulated vehicles are common within Polo Roundabout and emergency coordinated agencies are worried about it. Before now, when we finished the on-the-spot assessment, we haven't gone round. We met with the university management body. On their own part, uh, they told us that they made some uh, bombs, speed bombs, right some, some few uh, meters away from the uh, roundabout. And we learned that it has been a recurring decimal. So on our own part, again, we're going to come down to look at measures to see how this will be, be mitigated. Uh, barricades have been done, if not because of the barricade, the impact will have been much. But now, again, on our own part as a coordinating agency, we will now call on the uh, National Union of Transport Workers on the haulage and the big trucks to see how this will be averted, uh, I mean, averted. If possible, to maybe go through the bypass or also, also do barricades like other states, the way they do it. That will help a great deal in now mitigating or even stopping this uh, uh, recurrent accident that is always going on. At the time of this report, one person has been confirmed dead. Emergency responders have since commenced the evacuation of the debris and stock taken of affected properties. That's the program for this week. Thanks for watching. See you again same time next week. I enjoy me or Taibi.